Good morning. And welcome to this time together in God's presence. It's an exciting Sunday when it's Cantata Sunday. It's wonderful to see everyone this morning, and it's wonderful to be together in God's presence. You'll notice we're having a few difficulties, technical difficulties this morning. So for the viewing audience, for the people who will be watching online, you might notice a bit of movement that you don't normally see when the cameras are going from shot to shot. This morning, I would ask that you would hold the Vandermeer family in your prayers. Um, Albert Vandermeer, who is Derek's brother, his, Albert's wife has passed away. And I ask that you would hold that family in your prayers this week as they will be preparing for, for visitation and for a funeral or for a memorial service. So let's hold the Vandermeers in our prayers and in our thoughts this week. A reminder that Christmas Eve, there will be a service here at St. Paul's at 4 p.m. and there will be a virtual worship online on December the 25th. And on January 1st, the worship committee will be leading in worship and thank, thank you to the worship committee for doing that. Reminder about this afternoon, there is the Kempville Male Choir, their Christmas concert will be held today, not, yes, this afternoon at 2 p.m. at North Gore United Church. We remember that for thousands of years, the First Nations have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. Wherever you are worshiping from, let us join in acknowledging and honoring the heritage and the gifts that are so much a part of where we live. Let us seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations as we live, work, and worship. We come to this time to make a home for love. We come to tell the story of a woman who said yes, of a stable and a manger and angels singing before frightened shepherds. We come to celebrate the birth of the one who would teach us that his life was the beginning of new life for all of us. We come to worship the God who asks us all to say yes, to carrying that which will bring justice, mercy, and peace into this world. We come to remember. We come into this place to reimagine our place in God's incarnation. Let us worship God. God's people ask for signs of God's presence. Emmanuel, God with us. From ancient times, they have called upon God for salvation. Emmanuel, God with us. Shine your face upon us, they cry. Emmanuel, God with us. And an angel said to Joseph, Emmanuel, God with us. Come, let us worship God. We join in singing, People Look East.
Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Today we light the fourth candle, the candle that represents love. We live in a world longing for love, a love that recognizes each one of us as a child of God, a love that welcomes us as we are, a love that celebrates all that we are. Knowing the need for love in our own lives and in the world, we light this candle as a symbol of love promised in the coming of Jesus. prophets spoke of one who would bring hope to God's people, uniting them all in peace and reigning in glory and truth. The prophet Isaiah said, The Lord will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And she and shall call his name Emmanuel. And he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. For centuries, as God's people struggled to be faithful believers, that promise echoed in their hearts, and they watched and waited.
Galilee, in the village of Nazareth, there lived a young woman named Mary. One day the angel Gabriel appeared to her and said, Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. The Holy Spirit will come to you, and through the power of God you will be with child. You will give birth to a son and name him Jesus. He will be called the Son of God, and his kingdom will last forever. Mary ponders, why should God choose me? Am I worthy of this blessing? The angel said I shouldn't be afraid, and yet this is all so sudden and confusing. This is what God wants me to do. I must put my trust in God and be a faithful servant. was troubled when he found out she was expecting a child, but an angel appeared to him in a dream, saying, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the Holy Spirit has blessed her. This child will fulfill what God spoke through the prophet. The time came when Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken. Everyone was required to return to their hometown to register. Joseph, a descendant of David, needed to travel to the town of Bethlehem in Judea. Why did this have to happen now? It's almost time for the baby to be born. It's such a long journey to Bethlehem. Will she be able to travel that far? I must try to keep her comfortable and protect her from harm. Why do we have to go now?
In the evening, when the weary travelers reached Bethlehem, Joseph knew that the night would be cold, so he began looking for a place for them to stay. Because so many had come to register, there was no room anywhere in the village. Finally, a kind innkeeper offered them shelter in the stable behind the inn. When he had said they had come all the way from Nazareth, I felt sorry for them. She seemed so tired, and yet there was something special about the way she looked at me. He was so worried about her and the baby. I know that the stable isn't the best place for them, but at least they'll be inside, out of the wind. They can make a bed out of some hay so she can rest. I hope they understand that it's the best that I could give them. slept, shepherds on a nearby hillside kept watch over their flocks through the night. It's really cold tonight. The sky is so dark, except for that one star over there. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. I wonder if anyone else has noticed it. It just seems to be shining down in one place. There must be something special happening. What could it mean?
shepherds watched their flocks, the sky was suddenly filled with a brilliant light, and an angel of the Lord spoke to them. The angel said, Behold, I bring to you good news of great joy. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Then there was with the angel a chorus of the heavenly host, rejoicing and singing loudly their praises to God. shepherd cried, look, it's just as the angel said it would be. He seems so tiny and fragile. Can you see the joy in his mother's eyes? This stable is so small, and yet even here in this humble place, the Holy Spirit is among us. This child is truly the one we've been waiting for.
There were wise men from a distant land who saw the bright star shining in the eastern sky. Recognizing it as a sign of the king's birth, they set out to greet him. The king said, the prophecy is fulfilled. The star has finally appeared. It must be the one because it shines brighter than any other. Come, we must gather our gifts and begin our journey. There's a star in the east and we must follow a star in the east. Followed the star until it came to rest over the stable in Bethlehem. They went in and found the baby and laid their gifts before him. We gather together once again as God's faithful peace people to celebrate the true meaning of this joyful season. Let us come now to the manger as they did so long ago at Bethlehem and offer our own gifts of love and faith. As we share with others the wondrous story of the baby, Jesus, Son of God, light of the world, our Savior, and King.
I would like to say thank you to Larry and to the choir members as well as, well as the McKenzie family for sharing the good news of Jesus' birth with us in scripture and song. And by the way, when some of us might have been, not that I'm a gardener, when some of you might have been putting your gardens to bed for the winter and doing, having your last golfing game of the season and perhaps going for your last kayak or canoe ride, I know that Larry and the choir were already practicing for this cantata. And I give them thanks for the time and the dedication to sharing this wondrous and good news with us. Thank you so, so much. And I say let's clap again for everyone. We do give thanks for the words of hope and joy you have shared through the anthems and for reminding us of the wonderful gift of Jesus' birth in our lives. Let us join together in affirming our faith, remembering God's constant and ever-abiding presence with us. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Having praised God through song and scripture, we now offer tangible signs of gratitude, confident that God's promises will be fulfilled through the ministries supported by our gifts. Let us pray. Loving God, you have blessed us with the gift of your Son, and indeed with the gift of life itself. Out of all these blessings, we give you back these, ble these offerings this day. Knowing that your promises will be fulfilled, we pledge our lives to you in anticipation of the coming of the one who brings us peace. Amen. Let us come before God in the prayers of the people. Come, Christ Jesus. Be a guest in our hearts and our homes this Christmas. Enter our lives today with your blessing. We are grateful for the wonder you bring. Draw near to us in friendship and faithfulness that we may know your presence. Come, Christ Jesus. Be our guide through the darkening days and the chill of winter. Show us the way to wisdom and gratitude. We are thankful for the kindness we know in friends and good neighbors. 
Encourage us to reach out to those who need your embrace and ours, so that together we may sing of your presence. Come, Christ Jesus. Be our hope in uncertain times. Touch us with your healing and grace. We remember before you those we know and those known to you alone who are living with grief or illness, those who face depression or discouragement, and any who will find this time of year difficult. Shine the light of your courage and comfort into their lives. Come, Christ Jesus, and reside within our hearts. Our world is struggling for the justice and mercy you bring. Draw near to all people, working for peace and justice. Hasten the day when the world's peoples will live as neighbors, reconciled in your truth and freedom. With voices united in loyalty and love, we offer the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now this is our chance to sing from the depths of our hearts and souls, and this is our chance to be singing joy to the world, and remember, you're being recorded for the service on the virtual service on the 25th of December. So let's sing joy to the world together. An angel came to Joseph and proclaimed, Emmanuel, God with us. In this final week before Christmas Day, may our waiting proclaim, Emmanuel, God with us. Go forth in joy to tell the world, Emmanuel, God with us.